Our topic this week is unionism in education. Teacher unionism has a long history, having evolved more than 100 years ago with organizations such as the National Education Association that function more as a professional association than as a labor union. Truer forms of a union began at the turn of the century in large cities such as Chicago. In the 1960s, Albert Schenke, as the newly elected head of the United Federation of Teachers in New York City, led several strikes that established in the minds of elected officials the power of the union. During the past three decades, unions such as the NEA and the AFT-UFT have been influential by generally serving as important allies and supporters of the Democratic Party. For example, during the New York City mayoral primaries in 2001, Randy Weingarten and the UFT originally supported Alan Hevesy switched to Fernando Ferrer during the runoff election, and finally supported Mark Green. In 2005, the UFT formally did not endorse either candidate Republican Michael Bloomberg or Democrat Fernando Ferrer for New York City mayor, although this was interpreted by many political observers as a tacit endorsement of Bloomberg. On the other hand, the Republican Party's entire education agenda on education since the early 1980s has centered extensively on reducing the influence and power of the teacher unions, especially the American Federation of Teachers. School choice, vouchers, and privatization have been keystones of this agenda. However, for the first time in recent history, the UFT has supported the Republican incumbent George Pataki for governor during the 2002 election. My first questions to you relate to the issue of union power. Do you support the aggressive nature of the NEA and the AFT-UFT in supporting political candidates? Has this served their membership well? More importantly, has it served the children of the schools well?